Welcome nine grade children. Today we are going to see the continuation of the first lesson in history. I welcome you all to the Z learning platform. Welcome. The topic today we are going to see is human enquiries into the past and origin of the world. Okay. So let's see how are the what are the studies and what are the related things in this under this topic. The first slide. The age of speculation. You know, humans are the only species in the world which has sixth sense. Yes, and they are able to research, study, ask questions, think, find out, discover, invent. Such a thing is seen only with the human beings. So here, humans are the only species on earth concerned with understanding as well as explaining the world about the universe. So what are the changes in the universe? In the past centuries ago, we are seeing there are lot many changes in the uh, universe uh, as historical way, geographically, uh, even in socially, culturally, in various differences are there. And who alone can understand these, uh, these changes is human beings. And they bring it into research and put it in a recordical thing, which we call as history. So they began asking questions, why this is happening, what is the reason behind it, how can uh, humans evolve from apes, such questions are asked, asked by human beings. So they are able to find out the answer and uh, bring out some researches related to such topics. So the lack of scientific knowledge and creation of world is reflected in the ancient writing and religious literature. You all know from the Bible, you know how man has been created. Yes, and so certain scientific lack of scientific knowledge is being answered by the religious literatures. So you can see from the uh, various religious literatures how man has been created and how man evolved in the universe, history of universe. So such things are being learned through histories. And who is the person who, who is, the, which species has given the answers for all these things is human beings. Then. The era is being divided into two, okay, that is BC or BCE, that is before common era, okay, before Christ or before common era and AD, Anno Dominus or CE, common era. So era is completely divided into BC and AD, we are living in the AD era, okay, AD era in the sense after the uh, division of two. The second part we are living and we are living in the most advanced era of the world history. Okay, the next slide, scientific foundations of geology, biology and archaeology. If you see these branches of studies, these branches of studies are interrelated. Okay, every, uh, if you take for example geology, there are biological instances or samples are being taken and they also answer biologically, okay? And if you take it in archaeology way, they also, they are also you are getting answers biologically or geologically. So each of these fields are being interrelated. They are not, they not uh, exist alone. So this is a, big, a bigger thing. Scientific foundations of geology, biology and archaeology, they have given lot many examples and uh, uh, facts through the uh, in the world history. That is world history in the sense is the olden age. Okay. Herodotus considered father of history. So this was the first person who brought history into being, who started history, who started recording things in books or uh, scripts. Okay. So that was uh, the, the person is Herodotus and he is called as the father of history. You should remember this. The rise of scientific inquiry into the origin of humans was possible possible because how does this scientific inquiry started? Okay, there are few points given here. We will go through each one by one so that we will understand how the scientific inquiry started in the history of the world. So the interesting collection of archaeological remains. In the previous class we saw the term archaeology, yes, archaeological remains, the materials remaining that is used by human beings which remain uh, for the future, yes, that is left back. They are called as archaeological remains and opening of museums. So in, if you go to museums, you will be seeing um, that is uh, the olden age, they would have been used 
copper materials brass materials mud materials weapons like stone weapons uh, iron weapons everything would have seen they would have been collected and they would have been data have been uh, stored in the museums so how they are getting all these things is from the archaeological remains so museums are a storehouse of these archaeological remains storehouse means a collection they have been collecting for years and centuries okay for the year, for the generations to come for the, for them to understand easier for them to learn and like a witness how the people in the olden age were living and how they were existing so such uh, interest in collection of archaeological remain has been an opening of museum so this gives a scientific inquiry again okay one point the second point if you see the development of ideas of stratigraphy and geology again the next thing is through stratigraphy and geology stratigraphy is earth remains and the differences in the earth under structures okay so all these ideas also also contribute to the scientific inquiry and the next one is darwin's theory of biological evolution last class we saw about the darwin's theory that is uh, just i was uh, pointing it out Darwin's theory of biological evolution that how humans were evolved from apes yes and uh, that also related to scientific inquiry still they are keep on inquiring about it how far we are been still related to the apes the discovery of human and animal fossils and stone tools you all know that human fossils animal fossils and various other stone tools under the earth they when they are excavating the earth they are able to get all these um all these uh, uh, artifacts sorry all these uh, materials from the archaeology okay the ability to decipher early scripts early scripts in the sense early writings early writings were not regular like what we use today yes they were really in an old form or in the early forms sometimes they may be like scribblings sometimes they may be like pictures okay just depicting what the condition was in that time if you see in the caves and all they'll be just having paintings like drawings as uh, humans hunting animals everything so through that itself they are depicting what they were doing in those days so ability to decipher early scripts and some scribblings even some writings older uh, in the olden uh, form of tamil if you see it will be completely different uh that word uh i adalam that lie and all will be written differently not like what we write today yes everything in the early scripts are different so that ability to decipher early scripts also comes under the scientific inquiry okay in the next slide stratigraphy what is mean by stratigraphy now we are going to see the definition or the term what is mean by stratigraphy this is very important please learn all the terms Come, which comes under the lesson okay so the study of origin nature and relationships of rock and soil layers that were formed due to natural and cultural activities this natural and cultural in the sense is natural is maybe rainfall or volcanic eruption or maybe a landslide or maybe uh, soil degradation anything maybe of that sort is called as natural activity but what is mean the cultural activity is cultural in the sense human activities whatever human may be human may be uh, if you see mohenjodaro and uh, harappa and all they were creating they were uh, creating that a uh, kind of a civilized city yes so that and all con- comes under cultural activities they are examples for cultural activities that is humans creating or earlier uh, old age kingdoms may be there a yes, certain kingdoms they will be in certain kingdoms they'll be having underground and all so when they'll have to cut the earth in such a way to create an underground uh, like a good or like something so these all come under cultural activities so when you study about the origin nature and the relationship of the rock and the soil and the soil sometimes people create uh, even many temples are been still outstanding examples for the rock cut temples and all yes so that that also comes under the stratigraphy and soil layers underground godons and uh, kingdoms uh, even in padmanavaram ba- uh, palace and all they'll have a place under the earth yes to store their wealth they to store to have some uh, keep their prisoners everything 
is that were formed due to natural and cultural activities. So, this is called as stratigraphy. The next thing is next term, oldest museum. Now, we are going to see certain museums which gives us the facts about the older archaeological remains. Okay, so you can see one picture given here, Capitolian Museum, picture of Capitolian Museum, you can see here. And you also have many museums in India also. Yes, the Museum of Enigaldi, Nanna in Mesopotamia established, was established in 530 BC. Okay, BC we all learn before common era. Okay, so before uh, that is the second part, that is the first part. Okay, in the, in the first part of the history itself, they have uh, established a museum. So, if you go there, you can see a lot many older data and the collections. Okay, Capitolian Museum in Italy. Okay, this is the oldest one, surviving museum at present, and Ashmolean Museum at Oxford University. Oldest university museum in the world. So, this is the now come now the existing one is the properly existing one is this Ashmolean University. And one more thing is Italy also. Okay. Now, the world famous and the oldest university is Ashmolean University, which was started in 1677 AD. AD means Anno Domini or Common Era. Okay. In the next slide, we can see. Few uh, terms, okay. Survival of the fittest, natural selection, uh, okay. Such such terms we are going to see. Charles Darwin's theory and concept on natural selection and the survival of the fittest uh, was scientific was a great scientific understanding of human origin. Really, Charles Darwin theory created a great change and revolution in the history of the human society. Yes. Generally, we all were thinking that God created man and we were created directly from the mud or the soil, whatever it is. But Charles Darwin brought out a greater change or a great, what to say is, upside down this. He brought the natural selection and the survival of the fittest and we were coming, we were taking origin from the apes. He started saying like that. So, let's see what is natural selection. The process by which organisms that are better adapted to their environment would survive and produce more offspring. Okay, so this is what what do you say is um, certain people are able to adapt adapt in cold places, but others cannot adapt in cold places, but they will prefer warm places or a temperate zone. So that is what they are saying. The process by which organisms that are better adapted to their environment. If uh, to, uh, I am surviving in a temperate zone, if I go suddenly to a uh, colder region, I may find it much difficult to, uh, for a for, for first few months to survive, it, it will be a little bit difficult. The same way certain animals, certain plants will not survive in a different region, they will select their adapt, place of adaption. Okay? So that is called as natural selection. But the one thing is only human beings are called to be the survival of the fittest because anywhere and everywhere they will change and adapt themselves to the conditions. First they may find it difficult but later they will adapt themselves to the conditions. So let's see what is the survival of the fittest. Survival of the form that will leave most copies of itself in successive generation. So wherever they are again they will have generations after generation after they when they reach the newer newer environment okay so survival of the fittest in the sense they will be surviving living they will not be dying there like certain times if you take a um, desert plant and if you like, plant it in a cold area it will not survive okay and if you plant a colder area uh, species and you plant it in a completely desert arid zone it will not survive because their natural selection is completely different but humans can survive anywhere. That's what is called, that's, this is the term given for the human being, survival of the fittest. Okay, in the next slide, you can see the picture of Charles Darwin. Yes, an idea for you, how he will be. Yes, the next slide, you can see fossils. Fossils are a great, a great, what to say, what a, a kind of a great, fact or a remains that we get which gives us more answers about the 
prehistoric or the uh, old age period. Let's see what is the fossil here. Prehistoric animal or plant that turn into stone over a period of time. When a plant or an animal is dying, have uh, died on a rock and after that some remains or uh, layers of raw soil or rocks a beam compressed on them okay and certain natural changes will create some chemical changes also will undergo so that create an impression in the rock which creates the fossils okay these fossils are great uh, uh, great witness for the uh, few species which are not existing nowadays so that what it's seen in the fossil and the next one is animal bones you can see one picture of animal bone and another picture of a plant okay animal bones preserved due to mineralization that's what i said uh, they undergo chemical changes so that makes them to be preserved in the rock okay so that that we get as a fossils next one paleontology what is the mean by paleontology paleontology means study of fossils so the term paleontology means study of fossils please learn all these terms it's very important in the next slide you can see one term called stone age bronze age and iron age okay stone age period when stone was mainly used for making implements the uh, that is uh, stone man we'll be calling the man, that is the first like our forefathers what they do is for they uh, they want to hunt some animals they want to get defense from animals they'll be using stone uh, stone tools and all okay that stone tools will be having sharp edges to either to kill the animals or to pierce or tear the flesh of the animals so that age is called stone age because every tools whatever they use is made out of stones okay so that's what is called a stone age period so period when stone was mainly used for making implements implements means tools and weapons the next one is bronze age the period when bronze metal developed when bronze metal started not only the weapons and elements have been used even the daily usage like vessels or even chariots or many other things vehicles everything are been created in the bronze metal okay so that age is called bronze age okay that uh, picture also depicts a funny way but still it's a very good example for these ages and the next one is iron age if you see iron age in the iron age you can see all the implements will be made out of iron okay weapons and iron age we are uh, we are after the iron age okay and many uh, after uh, inventing or discovering that iron we have crea created lot many changes in the uh, in the in the creativity of the human society so we have done a lot many things period when iron was smelted to produce implements implements in the sense for even for building construction we are using iron even for a big company even for a big uh, manufacturing of uh, uh, large many industries okay factories vehicles even your uh, even your uh, every every sort of bigger bigger four wheelers and six wheelers everything are created out of iron only so after iron was found it was a great change in the uh, history of the human being so iron age and you can see there dark age modern age and computer age also yes so each age are been named after how what kind of a discovery man has done in that particular time period hope you all understood our today's topic meet you in the next class Till then, thank you. Have a nice day.